Good morning, students. You yeah, are welcome to online teaching on security education. My name is Ed, Mr. Rahim, the security education teacher. Today, we are meeting on the week four and week five on our security education topic known appropriate actions and steps to be taken in terms of emerging that is appropriate actions and steps to be taken in terms of emergency. Before we go to the topic proper today, we would like to look at the objectives of this topic, that is what we intend to achieve at the end of the lesson. The general objective that is what we intend to achieve at the end of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, the student should be able to state the appropriate actions in emergency situations. You'll be able to state what the appropriate actions in the emergency situation. There are two steps to be taken in terms of emergency. Then, before we go there, we'll look at emergency. What is an emergency? said emergency is a situation that poses an immediate risk to health, life, property, or environment. A situation that poses what immediate risk, danger to health, life, property, or environment. It's known as a emergency. Then what are the appropriate actions in emergency situation? Are the, that is the appropriate actions in the emergency situation are one, stay calm, stay calm, two, evacuation should shelter, three, shelter in place, and four, lock down. To we'll go back again, the appropriate actions in the emergency situation are stay calm, evacuation or sheltering, shelter in place, and lock down. Then, emergency situations require appropriate actions. It is appropriate to stay calm and alert others to evacuate. Emergency situation requires appropriate actions and it is appropriate to stay calm and alert others to evacuate the area and then get shelter from the when there's emergency situation, the appropriate action is for you to stay calm. Don't need to be panicking. You need, don't need to show any kind of uh, guilt or anger. You need to remain calm and alert others to evacuate the area and then get shelter so we are as that is very safe. That an act of violence can occur without warning. An act of violence can work, can occur without any one. If you hear loud pop or you hear loud noise, then or gunfire, you suspect gunfire, then everyone should hide and remain silent. They should seek refuge in a room, close and lock the door and barricade the door if can it can be done quickly. That is, when you hear gunshots, go. Then you don't need to go out or you want to go and look what is happening. The next thing is for you to run inside and hide yourself and remain silent. And make sure you are in a room that is very secure. Close the door and lock the door. And even you barricade the door to strengthen the security baggage in the room. Then, what are the steps to be taken in terms of an emergency? The first one is fire. If a fire is detected within a building, then the following procedures will be followed. One, alert others in the building. 
when you hear that there is fire outbreak, then you need to alert others in the view. The second one is that we call the fire service and report the fire incident. So you call, first you need to alert the others that there is fire outbreak, everybody should try to find a way of escaping. Two, call the fire service and report the fire incident. Three, do not attempt to use fire extinguishers unless you are properly trained. Don't just hear there is fire outbreak here, you quickly carry fire extinguisher, you are going here to go and quench the fire. You need to call the fire service and report the fire incident. Unless you are properly trained in how to use the fire extinguisher to extinguish fire or to kill the fire or to put a stop to the fire. But the best thing is for you to call the fire service and report the fire incident. And you can also take a roll call about the people in the building before the fire outbreak to make sure that all the people that are inside the building are evacuated or move away from the fire, the building where there is fire or kind of a burning. Four, do not re-enter the building. After you have left the building, don't go back and say, I forgot something, I forgot my money. I want to go back and take my ATM card or my passport is there or whatever. Do not go back into the building because if you do that, you may be consumed by the fire. Five, stay up one of the fire or smoke and remain at a safer distance from the fire and fighting equipment. Make sure that you stay up wind uh, of the fire and smoke and remain at a safer distance from the fire and fighting equipment. It's not your own duty to say you want to go and put out the fire. Leave that work to the fire servicemen. They are the ones that are properly trained in that regard and they will do their job. The firefighter direct the firefighter to the location of the fire. That is, you give the proper description and the address to the firefighter so that they will, they can easily locate the place and put out the fire. And at the same time, you can even tell them the, the easiest uh, way or the shortest way to the place so that they can get there on time and put the fire in control before it goes beyond the situation. Then another one is a electricity outage. Electricity outage. When there's a kind of a parking uh, from the electricity, the first thing you do is to disconnect all equipment which could be damaged by power source when electricity is restored. When there is an electricity outage, maybe the NEPA has taken the light to see the electricity, then the first thing you do is to put, disconnect all the equipment, like your television, radio, air conditioner, fridge, deep freezer, and some other electronic gadget that you have at home, the fan, so that when the electricity is restored, they will not be damaged or there will be no kind of uh, outbreak. Two, turn off lights, appliances, window, air, conditioner, and other energy use to reduce power equipment for restoration. That is, you put off light when there's power, uh, electricity outage, appliance, window, your air conditioners, and other energy users to reduce power equipment for restoration. Then flash floods. Flash floods. What do you mean by flash floods? The flash floods are the rapid flooding of streams, valleys, and flood prone areas caused by heavy rain. Caused by what? Heavy rain. That is, flash floods are the rapid flooding of streams, valleys, and flood prone area caused by every when there when there is every damp there is tendency that will be flood 
on the road. They got out with the food and the lamb did not be able to swallow the all the water. Then on the road there will be flood in some area when there is a heavy rain. They said flood warnings are used by the National Weather Service. Flood warnings are used by the National Weather Service. They will tell you that the rain is going to fall heavily in Susu place and when there is a flood in some area, the National Weather Service will tell the people in order to alert them so that they will not pass through that area, they will pass through another road and tools. They will not go to that area at that time. And those people that are living in that area can move away for some times in order for the floor to get dry. Then you should listen to the radio and television. You should listen to the what the radio and television about the warnings on the flash floor. Then you should keep away from the flood prone areas. Do not enter flood roadways, parts, swing, flood control system, etc. When you know that there is a flood in social place, don't pass that. Don't go to that area at that time. And if anybody is trying to send you message, they tell them that you cannot enter flood because you may be swept away by the flood, which can lead to your death or damage or fear or poison or sustain any bodily injury. By like this, we can control the flood system. Then three, hazardous materials incidents. Hazardous materials incidents. Immediately inform the Environmental Health and Safety Office for safety. When there is any kind of hazardous material incident, then the first thing you do is to inform the Environmental Health and Safety Office for safety. You need to inform them so that they will quickly come, like a, a falling down of a tanker, fuel tanker that contains fuel, and the fuel is leaving on the road. You need to inform the Environmental Health and Safety Office for safety. Otherwise, if it is involved a fire, it can lead to a whole a, a wide range of a outbreak which may not be easily controlled. But before it leads to that, we quickly inform the Environmental Health and Safety Office for safety. Two, evacuate the area or building. Evacuate the area or building. Stay offline of the incident and remain at safe distance to avoid contact. That is, you should stay offline of the incidents and Incident and remain at a safe distance to avoid contact, e.g., like uh, fumes, gases, paper, etc., with the hazardous material. Then, five, the fifth one shooting incidents. In case of an active shooters inside or outside your compound, you will hear gunshot, who, who. Either inside your compound or outside your compound, the first thing you do is to secure the immediate area. Make sure that your area is secured. Lock and barricade doors. Turn off lights. You secure your immediate area. Lock and barricade your door. Turn off lights. Close the window blind. Silence cell phones. Lock windows. Turn off radio and computer monitors. Keep occupant calm, quiet, and out of sight. Keep yourself out of sight and take adequate cover or protection. The last one you call the police if possible. Let's go back again on the shooting incident. When there is a shooting incident in your area, either within your compound or outside your compound, then the first thing you need to make sure your area is secure. Two, lock and barricade your doors. Three, turn off lights. Then four, close the window blinds. Five, silence your cell phone so you can put it in vibration or you have it so that it will not ring out to create a kind of a unwarranted scene or not to make unnecessary noise in order to alert the shooter that there is somebody there. Lock windows. Seven, turn off radios and computer monitors. Keep occupant calm, quiet, and out of sight. 
keep yourself out of sight and take adequate cover and protection. Then you call the police if possible. Then, if an active shooter enters your apartment, try to remain calm. If possible, alert the police. Then, if there is no opportunity of escape or hiding, it might be possible to negotiate with the shooter. Or attempting to overpower the shooter with force should be considered a very large result after all other options have been exhausted. Let's go back. They said, if an active shooter enters your apartment, one, you should try to remain calm. Two, if possible, alert the police. Three, if there is no opportunity of escape or hiding, then it is better for you to negotiate with the shooter so that you give them whatever they are looking for in order to leave you to continue to live. Then, attempting to overpower the shooter with force should be considered a very last resort after all other options have been exhausted. Then, if the shooter leaves the area, proceed immediately to a safer place and do not touch anything that was in the vicinity. So, with that, you'll be able to prevent crime. You'll be able to you have, you'll be able to take active steps in avoiding emergency situation. This will still keep you alive and keep you safe. Thank you. God bless. Remain calm and stay safe until we meet again in the next class in the special session. God bless us. Thank you.